Welcome back to the 9mm Ammo Quest, where I'm trying to find ammunition that will work with the micro pistols. This is a, a three inch barrel 9mm, little small, you know, as small as my hand uh, pistol, and I want it to have the ability to hit hard enough to cause an incapacitating wound. If you place your, your shots properly, that's part of the job. It's an important part of the job, but the ammo also has to be able to penetrate deep enough to hit and disrupt the vital organs in order to force an attacker to stop. And those specifications, as established by the International Wound Ballistics Association and the Wound Ballistic Conferences of 1987 and 1993, are that the bullet needs to be able to penetrate 12 inches at a minimum through soft tissue, 18 inches at a maximum, any further than 18, and it's over-penetrating and it's out. Any less than 12, it's considered an under-penetrator and it's out. So between 12 and 18 inches with expansion. Today's candidate, Federal Premium HST. These are standard pressure, 124 grain. And I gotta say, HSTs have been one of my favorites. I have tested them in 45 and 40 for my own personal carry usage and found them to be stellar performers. I don't know how they'll work out in nines and my 40 and 45s are full size pistols. This is a compact size pistol. So I don't know if that shorter barrel length is gonna give the HSTs a problem or not, but we'll find out. Testing protocol is gonna be the same as what the FBI would do or the IWBA would have done for personal defense. I don't care about barrier penetration. I'm not the FBI, I'm not law enforcement. I don't care whether it'll go through auto windshield glass or or through plywood or whatever i just want to know will it penetrate deep enough to stop an attacker so i'm using the same professional ballistic gelatin that the fbi uses mixed in the same way that they do it stored at the same temperature that they use shot in the same time frame that they use calibrated to the same depth that they use and covered in 16 ounce per square yard heavy denim uh, I'll also be testing it in bare gelatin using the clear ballistics synthetic ballistic gel. The bullet's got to pass both tests. It's got to succeed in the bare gelatin and it's got to succeed in the heavy denim or if it fails either one, it's out. But that's the protocol. That's what we're going to do and we're going to head out to the range and do it right now. The results through the bear gel look promising because uh, the shortest bullet that we can see here is at 13 and a half inches, but in actuality, there are some substantial bounce back tracks. So we have to compensate for those. And using the Schwartz formula, we're gonna be able to move these into position to show what their true penetration actually was. And their true penetration in the bear gel is stellar. Absolutely stellar. We've got four of them. Basically, four of them landed right at 15 inches. You've heard me say in my other tests, 15 is perfect. Four of them landed on 15. And then we had one that went to 15 and three quarters, which is still perfect. So for bear gel performance, you cannot ask for better than what the HSTs just delivered. When we're looking at the gel block of the HST through denim, basically I'd say if you ever wanted to see what absolute perfection was like from a handgun, this is it. Perfect expansion, perfect penetration. The shortest bullet came in at 13 and 3 quarters inches. After that, they got quite a bit further. The second shortest bullet was 15 inches. We had one at 15 and a quarter, one at 16, and we had this one here that was peeking out of the block that actually went to 16 and a half. So anything around 15 inches, 15 and a half is really kind of perfect. And we had basically every one of them hit right near that zone. Probably be pretty cheeky of me to say, but look at this. This should be a textbook manual for how bullet designers should design bullets. In the bare gelatin here, we have five bullets that performed more consistently more perfectly than just about any bullets I've ever tested. The expansion is almost identical. The average expansion is 0.521 to 0.523 inches on all five of them. Now on the uh, denim 
rounds, we had a little bit more variation and they are on average a little bit smaller, but you, you expect that when going through the denim. Denim impairs the, the expansion ability just a little bit, but these are perfect. You are not going to find a better example of how ammunition is supposed to perform. They're just absolutely perfect. And for those who think the polymer tip is so necessary, this one here, he's got some denim that was clogging his cavity and actually still is. So what? It expanded anyway polymer tip or not, and in this case, not, because only the Hornadies have the polymer tip, but the HST didn't care. It performed absolutely perfectly through the heaviest of denim and expanded properly, and penetrated deeply, and this is an absolute textbook example of great performance. This is probably the most successful ammo test I've conducted on YouTube yet. Final wrap up on the HST 124 grain standard pressure 9 millimeter from the three inch barrel. This is how it should be done. HST, I don't know what it really stands for, but I'm saying it stands for hot stuff because this performed perfectly. This is exactly what I was hoping I could find. I could call off the rest of the ammo quest right now because I don't know that I'm going to find anything that did or will do better than this. I guess the only thing I could be looking for is maybe if I find one that expands bigger, but it's not going to penetrate better. It's not going to penetrate more consistently. It's not going to expand more consistently. I mean, it, it, it passed every possible test with complete flying colors. Uh, well done, Federal. Uh, thanks for making ammo that works properly from the three inch barrel. And, you know, there are other types of HST out there. They're supposed to be, I, I can't find them in stock anymore, but they're supposed to be 124 grain plus P and 147 grain standard pressure and 147 grain plus P. I'll try to get a hold of all of those. I'll try to test them, but I'm going to go ahead and say that even if they work as well or even perhaps better, this may still be the best choice because a standard pressure round, first of all, there's some guns like the Diamondback DB9 that specifically prohibit using plus P. So maybe this would be a better choice anyway. And second of all, penetration is important. Uh, Consistency of expansion is important, but also the ability to put your shots on target has got to be considered very important. So a lighter bullet that shoots softer, all other things being equal, the lighter, softer shooting bullet is probably going to be easier to control and easier to hit with and easier to get follow-up shots with than a heavier, higher pressure, harder recoiling round would be. So I think this stuff is great. I highly recommend it. I think this is this is a perfect performer. I will continue testing. And if you want to stay tuned to the testing, please hit the subscribe link so you'll be notified when new tests are posted. But uh, I could stop right now and be happy with this. And I'll tell you, immediately at the range when I was done testing this one, because I test three, four, five rounds at a time, uh, I pulled, as soon as I was done, I pulled my carry ammo out of my SIG here and reloaded it with HSTs because these are a great choice. Thanks for watching and stay tuned and more ammo tests are coming up all the time.